Come on. Hey, what is up, everyone? This is Juicy Hockey with Gordo. I am your host, Gordo. Hope everybody's weekend was awesome. And they watched a lot of juicy hockey, a lot of juicy gossip. Today, we're going to be talking about our recap of all the games on the weekend and previewing tonight's games. And we'll be talking about why was the media very one-sided against the Florida Panthers last night and the hit that Sam Bennett unleashed on the ultimate rat. It was basically the series finale of Tom and Jerry, most likely. All right, let's get to the first topic of the day, recapping the games over the weekend. Well, it's no surprise here. The Florida Panthers beating the Boston Bruins in game three and game four. And the Panthers have won consecutive games at TD Garden. Most since the Bruins did since tw- in their run in the, to the Cup Finals in 2013. I got to say is, the Boston Bruins, the clock is ticking. It's over. You know, you guys don't have the depth. You guys were, are running on fumes, and you guys have a little left in the tank, and you guys going to end up in the freeway like Kramer with the car salesman, see if the car can go over the limit when there's no fuel, if there's, like, spare fuel left. I mean, come on. This series is over. And I cannot believe how TNT – was promoting to be goons on the Florida Panthers. And they're like, oh, my God, Brandman Shan, we just got a new angle of the hit. I mean, where the hell was that during, you know, the post-game stuff on Friday? I mean, well, we just got a new camera angle. I mean, what type of drugs are you taking? Are you taking Jack Edwards' Homer pills? Jesus Christ, that is awful. I mean, biz. Arms, come on. Hank, Ace, come on, you guys. You guys are national television. You're not Nesson. You're not Boston, you know. And I'm sorry to say this, but Boston and Massachusetts used to be the spirit of America, but they're not anymore. They are the languishly, the despirited of hell. Boston is a joke. Their fans are a joke. The media there is a joke. They cry and cry. And they're promoting this network is promoting, we want a traditional original six matchup so we can generate more revenue and money. You guys are scared because that the Sunbelt markets are taking over hockey. And the traditional markets are being like, well, we have to do something because we have to make money. Because, listen, we need to grow the game of hockey worldwide, nationwide. But, you know, I do not want to watch another, like, Blah blah New York Boston. Nobody cares. I don't I can't stand Boston. I can't stand New York City. And their their sports fans are just like, Ugh. you know, I got a feeling and a prediction. Tomorrow night, the Florida Panthers will touch and bounce the Bruins to Cancun or Glavestone or freaking Martha's Vineyard, whatever I know. And it's gonna be a Five game series, you can put five on it, and we will treat you so bad. And it's no joke right there. And as for the you know, the Canucks and Oilers, this matchup, it's gonna be an it's 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 a trashy matchup, you know. You know, Savos for the you know Canucks has been playing well, and I believe he's gonna be the Cinderella story that carries the Canucks to the conference finals. But the Oilers have been a disappointment, they need a goaltender. I mean this series is going to go seven. It's all or nothing at this point. And I feel bad for McDavid and Dreisaitl and Hyman. They they got a very strong nucleus on the top six, but their depth is very crappy right now. It's it's shit. They need to get a goaltender to win the Stanley Cup. If I was the Oilers, I would get a goaltender. I would definitely get some help on the back end and make sure, you know, you got – a Vesna Trophy winning goaltender. It, I mean, it sucks to see a team like the Oilers. You know, they had a lot of promises and talents, and they are screwing themselves out of it. And I wouldn't be surprised if Vancouver wins this series at this point. I wouldn't. And, you know, it, it's been a back and forth, back and forth series. And th- I believe every game from this point on, it's going to be somewhat. Every goal is one goal game in this series. But then, you know, we all thought the Rangers were going to sweep 
you know, the Carolina Hurricanes. And I'm not surprised they're playing tonight at this point. They're playing tonight. The Carolina Hurricanes, they got their win at home. They finally got something on the power play. And it's I believe this series is going to be very – I think that I, everybody wants this to go to seven. I wanted to go to seven. You know, they just want the theatrics, and they all know that, you know, Shesterkin is their go-to guy. He's he's their MVP for the Rangers so far. Lafonniere, he's been a stud. Bread, Troach, those guys are phenomenal. Mika, Savannah Jed, Truba. I mean, everybody hates Truba. I mean, and I'll say this, the Carolina Hurricanes, you know, you got Tony D'Angelo and Presick and Brady Shea and Ajo, but they need a second line center. I mean, losing Trochik the free agency to the Rangers, that was very costly for them. But I still believe, you know, this series is going to go deeper. I believe this Rangers hurricane series is still going to be deep. And as for the avalanche and the stars, this series is going to go to seven. You know, it was fun to see a back and forth, back and forth. And I got to say, I thought it was very well presented and Dallas, you know, they, they were punching in, punching out, but Colorado though, they, you know, it, it's gonna, it's gonna be a, it's a tricky series. These two teams, you know, they've had a history against each other, but I, like I said before, I say it again, this series is going to go to six to seven games. And I wouldn't be surprised if, Either of those two play against Vancouver or Edmonton. You know, everybody's telling me, oh, the West is going to be strong. West is the best. I, I, I watch those games. I think the Western Conference is weak. It's a weak conference. And the goaltending has been subpar average at best. I mean, the statistics has been, like, very disappointing. And like I said, I really did not like, you know, how TNT was being – like goons advocates for Boston over Florida. I thought it was very Jack Edward drugged out, you know, biased, you know, talk. And I think that Sam Bennett hit was clean. You know, Tom and Jerry, it's like I said, Tom and Jerry series finale. We took the rat out. It's gone, you know, and put that in the stat sheet, baby. You know, tonight we're going to see some good hockey. And I believe we're going to see either we're going to see a closeout or we're going to see ah, 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 staying alive. And we'll be right back after these messages. We'll be talking about tonight's games when we'll be right back after these messages. We are back tonight. We got two juicy matchups between the New York Rangers and the Carolina Hurricanes at Madison Square Garden. And the Dallas Stars against the Colorado Avalanche in Denver. Okay, so we've got our intel that the New York Rangers are at a minus 105 and the Carolina Hurricanes at a minus 115. I'll tell you, these this matchup is going to be a close one. And every game we've seen so far in this series have been one-goal games. Seriously, one-goal games. And we're seeing that the Carolina Hurricanes are at a minus 115 for tonight's game. And the Rangers, they're the underdogs at home. And I don't get that. I seriously don't get it. You know, it's astonishing to see that these two teams are even Steven so far, you know, with with the results of each game. I, I'm, I'm going to say, you know, Carolina – they are favorites for this game and they got to do what's right. They want to extend the series and extend their season. And the Rangers, you know, they are the best team in the NHL and the fans want an extended season. They want to extend the series, but overall, I just got this feeling that it's going to be another one goal game. It's another one goal game. And I'm going to pick Carolina for this one. And, you know, we've seen this happen before with San Jose losing to L.A. for straight. The Flyers against the Bruins back in 2010. I mean, history can repeat itself. I really like the chances for Carolina. And I would love for them to 
make the storm stronger and stronger, you know. It went from a depression, and there's going to be more aggression. And I got to tell you, Carolina wins this game by one again. Theatrics, anti-Semitic, like what I was going to say, theatrics, basically. I was going to say a very theatric type of game, classic type of game. I got to say Carolina wins by one. It will be a 3-2 regulation win. And that's right, right, guy, right there. And then, t- and we are got our matchup tonight. We got the Dallas Stars and the Colorado Avalanche, and we've got the Dallas Stars who are up two one in their series, and the Avalanche are currently at a minus one thirty five. And I'll tell you this right here: we're going to see somewhat an even Steven series, and the over and under is six and a half, and. I like what Dallas is bringing to the table, but Colorado, they're the favorites at home. This is going to go back and forth, back and forth, and then we're going to see a best out of three. I wouldn't be surprised Colorado wins this game. It's going to be a best out of three after this. And and whoever, and I tell you, whoever stands on their head is going to win the series. But, you know, like I said, I looked at, we all looked at stats that we're going to see this. The goaltending has been subpar, but I got to say, we're going to see this something being tied up tonight. And we're going to see a six and a half under, over and under. And I got to say, we're going to go over seven to eight goals tonight. Or nine. I'm going to go five, four, Colorado. Colorado Avalanche will win by one or maybe two. I'm going to say 6-3, 5-4, 6-3 at this point. McKinnon's going to be lights out. And Mac- and, and Cal McCarr and Valerie Nuchishkin. I got to tell you, the, I think that's what's going to happen. And I, I wouldn't be surprised Casey Middlestad st- get, gets a couple of helpers. He's been very underrated. underrated. And, and Mikulin, you know, for the Avalanche as well, I – like Colorado's chances tonight and this one will be a nine goal game I'm going to go either 5-4 or 6-3 Colorado for this game and they will tie the series tonight and we'll be right back after these messages coming up we're going to be talking about more about the game the Panthers game against the Bruins and the controversial somewhat hit and we'll be talking about other latest rumors around the NHL. We'll be right back with these messages. We are back. Okay. So let me go back to this whole thing. So last night watching this Panthers game against the Bruins, I've never thought I say this, but yeah, I had to mute the TV. I had to mute the TV because TNT was riding on, you know, Boston so hard because they were so homers on Boston because, oh, it's an original six market, you know? Oh, no, brand my shine. Wah, wah, wah. You know, cry me a river. I can't stand it. And that Sam Bennett goal really counted. It counted. It was a good goal, good goal in the play. And it was a great comeback last night. And all I have to hear is all these Bruin fans cry and cry. I mean, geez, you know, like, I, I mean, what's going to be like when, when the Panthers got to play the freaking Rangers in the conference finals? You know, I mean, we get it, you know, like we're, we got to play aggressive, but, you know, I bet a lot of, you know, hockey fans from who are not Panther fans who do not like Truba, I wouldn't be surprised that, you know, Bennett becomes a national treasure if he takes out the captain of the New York Rangers, Jacob Truba. I wouldn't be surprised. And it will be it, it's gonna be it's gonna be a hard-nosed, hardcore series if, if when it happens. But I gotta say, you know, Barkov, phenomenal, Lundy Boy, phenomenal, Tarasenko, phenomenal. Yeah, the Bruins though. You know, Pat Maroon just came out and said, oh, we got to win a game. I mean, dude, shut up. You got your three cups. Retire. We don't We don't want to hear your antagonistic behavior. I mean, you're all talk. You only played eight minutes out there. You didn't do nada. Zip nada. And I'll tell you, that 
you know, I it, when when this series closes out tomorrow night, and I gotta tell you, I think the Bruins are gonna have a very unique off season. I think there's gonna be about almost half the roster changes, and we're gonna see a very different Boston Bruins team but when the fall comes. And as for Vancouver, I heard Connor Susie could be suspended for the cross check on Connor McDavid. It's no secret. I mean, the NHL, they're going to give, you know, Susie maybe one or two games at most. But, you know, they want the series to keep going and going. Overall, the Panthers, what they did to the Bruins last night, it shows that the Panthers are dangerous. Look at all the gambling websites. Look at Hard Rock, look at MGM, look at Caesars, you know, DraftKings. Every damn, like, gambling site, about almost, about, I'm going to say about 80%, 80% saying that the Florida Panthers are now the official favorites to win the Stanley Cup. Those numbers, it's like, wow. Even higher the Rangers. That is astonishingly crazy. To see that, that the Florida Panthers are favorite than the President Trophy winning New York Rangers. And don't forget, the last time the New York Rangers won the President Trophy was back in 2014-15. And they lost to the conference finals to the Tampa Bay Lightning. And I'm not surprised. I believe this will happen. That the New York Rangers will play the Panthers. And we're going to see an ultimate choke job. Florida Panthers will will win that series when it happens. I will not be surprised. But I just can't believe the whole bias thing. Like it, 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 it was like as a hockey fan, when you're national television, you have to be neutral. You can't pick sides. You know, I I was very appalled by the whole. Oh yeah, he, you know, you got to get Sam Bennett. You got to put him on a stretcher. You got to put him in a stretcher with Barkov and all that stuff. That's not how you do your job. If I was running TNT, I would tell them, knock it off. If you pull off one more BS thing about targeting an opponent, one of you guys is going to get the Donald Trump treatment. You're fired. I wouldn't be surprised. And the NHL needs to do something about, you know, I was not happy with TNT's one-sided, you know, first game last night. But they did they did well with the second game, though. But overall, I was just offended by TNT, you know, by their by their be by their behavior and action of targeting the Florida Panthers. I thought you guys loved old time hockey, but you don't like their type of old time hockey. Oh, too bad, too bad. You know, when 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 the Panthers win the Stanley Cup, when they do, you guys will be like crying, crying, and there's nothing you can do about it. And go play a Drake song while you while you're moping and crying, you know. And the Panthers, oh yeah, we'll be the Panthers are gonna be playing loud, loud Kendrick Lamar tracks, any type of song. It's pump up. Drake's no pump up. You know, Boston fans wine and dine like like Drake and Taylor Swift fans. Wow, you know, demonically evil. Overall, we're all going to celebrate tomorrow night. We're all going to celebrate tomorrow night, and it's going to be a fun one. All right, coming up, we've got the rumors of the day, and we're going to talk about previewing more and more hockey. We'll be right back after these messages. We are back. We got the juiciest coaching rumors. So the Toronto Maple Leafs, there's been speculated reports that Tom McClellan and Craig Ruby are in the talks of the, becoming the next coach of the Toronto Maple Leafs. My, meanwhile, the former coach of the Toronto Maple Leafs, Sheldon Keith, is the head of Don favorite to become the next New Jersey Devils coach. And I believe Sheldon will be successful. And as for Todd McClellan and for Craig Ruby, you know, be prepared, you know. You know, it's going to be a tough job in Toronto, and we're going to see if this is going to be a retool offseason. And there's been a lot of speculation of teams that Mitch Marner might be heading to. 
we've been hearing some interesting trade talks, trade moves for the young winger for Mitch Marner. I'll tell you, these these talks have been very interesting. And here's one of the trades. So we've got Toronto Maple Leafs trade Mitch Marner to Nashville for UC Soros. Toronto gets a goaltender. And then Nashville gets a legitimate playmaker. But there's a downside to it because Nashville could definitely use Soros another couple of years because, you know, Askarov, I don't believe he's ready to be the full-time starter in the NHL for another two years. And then you've got Nash, you got the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Buffalo Sabres. The Buffalo Sabres acquire Mitch Marner, David Camp, Kelly Young, Crook, Connor Timmons, and a third round pick in 2026. And at least acquire Dylan Cousins and Jordan Greenway. That, that trade will never happen because it's you're in the division. I think it's stupid. And then you got the Vegas Golden Knights and the Toronto Maple Leafs. Maple Leafs acquire Shea Theodore, Nicholas Waugh, and a first round pick in 2024 for Mitch Marner. Interesting, but cap situation. Let's just see where that leads up to everything. And then the interesting one here is the Seattle Kraken involved. So Shane Wright and Jamie Olszewski will go to the Toronto Maple Leafs, the former fourth overall pick and the former first round defenseman going from Seattle to Toronto. And Jamie Olszewski and Shane Wright. And then Mitch Marner for inaugural Kelly Young Crook to back to Seattle. Interesting, interesting. I like that. I like that move. And then you've got Adrian Kempe and Jordan Spence from LA to Toronto and the Maple and the LA Kings acquire Mitch Marner and Nick Robertson. Interesting, but I don't think it's going to work out because, you know, you got to figure out what the hell you're going to do with Pierre Luc Dubois. And then the Penguins, you know, somewhat of a reunion. Mitch Marner goes to the Penguins for Tristan Jerry, Ricard Raquel, and Samuel Poulan. That trade could work, but I don't know, you know. The Penguins need to be rebuilding, not retooling. I think this is another asinine move, and if that happens, I think Dubas will be hit the road, Jack Ray Charles shit in the next year or two. And then Philadelphia in Toronto. you got Scott Lawton, Rama, Ristolainen, and a second-round pick of next year for Marner and Timmy Lee Lindgren. Not bad move, not bad move, but – it could work. It could work. And listen, Philadelphia is in a weird, weird transition of power right now. And I got to tell you, it, 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 I think it, it, I could see that move happening. It could happen. Then you've got St. Louis. You've got Jake Neighbors going from St. Louis and with Colin Perigo to Toronto for Mitch Marner. Not a bad move, but I don't see it. St. Louis is a team that's retooling built rebuilding hybrid right now i don't see that trade happening then you've got jacob markstrom and ramas anderson from calgary to toronto for mitch marner i don't like it i really don't like that trade at all it's barbaric and they got to figure out what they're gonna do with the salary cap and stuff but it's a business we get it we get it it's a business but I, I got to tell you, it's, you know, Toronto is going to be a team. A lot of people love Toronto in mysterious ways, but I just don't see them actually, you know, trading Martyr to half of those teams I mentioned. I'm seeing he's going to go somewhere unprecedentedly and unpredictable. And, so on and so forth. We'll be right back after these messages and coming up where we'll conclude our episode of the day. All right. To conclude our show for the day. So we've seen, we are talking about the Carolina Hurricanes trying to make the epic comeback for tonight's game. I got the Hurricanes winning 3-2. And then I've got the Avalanche tying the series against the Stars. Either it's going to be 5-4 or 6-3. And I would like to talk about the story I heard on Friday was this new three-on-three hockey league, the Major League Hockey. And I got to tell you, it's a scam. It's fake. You know, did my research. And I can't believe that Alan Walsh and Stephen Dangle were promoting this thing on social media. 
And where's the website? Where is the LinkedIn and Indeed and all that stuff? Where is the, the publicity? Even the even the Canadian media and the Sun Media Company, they're like, yeah, they know it's it's garbage. It's fake. You know, listen, it's not the first time that I looked into getting a job in the, in the hockey world in a startup league. And I, and I, my first job was being a stick boy slash equipment manager of a minor league team, semi-pro team in some little town in Northern Michigan called Harbor Springs. And I'll tell you, you know, it was a fun league, but you know, where's our goddamn trophy? You know, we won the league championship when the league folded. Where the hell's our compensation? Where's our prize money? You know, and this three on three is so BS. I don't think it's going to happen. It's all rouse. And I really don't think it's going to work. And, you know, and I don't think it would work. You know, you already got three ice, you know, which is, is ran just fine and perfectly well managed by Craig Patrick and Eddie Johnson. But this new major league hockey pff, shit. I would rather have the, 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 the three ice league or, you know, bring back the roller hockey on the beach in California or in South Florida. And don't forget, you know, in the NHL arenas, you know, a lot of players need to make money some way, somehow. And I would love to see, you know, more minor league hockey pro like professional leagues in the States. You know, it'd be nice though. But anyhow, I think my audience tomorrow will be recapping last night's game, tonight's games, and for the juiciest rumors. This has been Juicy Hockey with Gordo. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and God bless.